This video introduces the new features for the Miracle's 2017A release, uh, which is available November 2016 and can be downloaded from the website. The 2017A release has several new features. Uh, the first is a new geometry kernel and device, which improves the handling and visualization of complex geometries and components. We've also made a lot of progress in terms of compact model development support for photonic integer circuits. This includes the release of a new Lumerical Compact Model Library, or LCML, a much more streamlined parameter extraction process, broadband mode sources, as well as advanced game fitting algorithm for the laser compact model in Interconnect. Also included is Monte Carlo analysis in Interconnect. Uh, this facilitates photonic integer circuit design verification and yield analysis. And finally, we've also added new function to the Lumerical Optical Toolbox, which analytically calculates the optical response of a plane wave and a dipole source in a multi-layer stack. The figure here shows our current product portfolio for component design, as well as circuit simulations. Uh, for optical simulations, we have FDT solutions and mode solutions. For electrical simulations, we have the charge transport solver and device, which can simulate the electrical properties of semiconductors. We also have a heat transport solver, also in device. And on the circuit side, we have Interconnect, which is compatible with a number of EDA tools for simulations of photon integrated circuits. So the new geometry kernel and device now uses a 3D ACES modeler from Spatial. And this is the industry standard for 3D modeling technology. It allows us to significantly improve the way that device handles complex geometries and as you'll see, we've also updated the CAD with a new look and feel. So this is a new CAD environment in device. Uh, when you first open this view, you'll see an option to go to a link in the knowledge base, which has a really nice description of all the cool things that you can do in this new environment. As you can see, uh, the new CAD has a single viewport, which you can rotate and pan very easily. And you can also use the mouse to zoom. Uh, there's a navigation queue uh, on the right side and the access triad on the left side here, which allows you to navigate uh, around the viewport very easily. For example, you can click on any of the surfaces and snap to it. You can click on the center to rotate around that orientation. You can also click on one of the sides or the edges to snap to that orientation as well. And in the selection mode, you can select different objects as well as a uh, pen and rotate. And uh, there's a lot of nice shortcut keys uh, to, to, to do of these operations. And the link at the knowledge base has a detailed list of all the shortcut keys and mouse interactions uh, that you can do with the new CAD. But um, if you prefer to go back to the classic view, you can also do that by going to View, Set Default Layout, and Classic. And this will bring you to the same design environment uh, as before. But I would really encourage you to, uh, to try the new design environment as much as possible, and we will be adding more and more features and improvements on this. On the right side of this slide here, uh, we have a solar cell design. It's very complex with multi multiple layers of spheres and cylinders. And uh, it would have been very challenging to create this kind of a geometry with the old version of the device. But uh, with a new geometry kernel, this is a very simple exercise. And on the right here is the uh, geometry that's uh, being built. You can see all the layers. And in addition to changes in device, uh, we've also added a lot of new features related to uh, building and developing compact model libraries. So the first is the release of the Lumerical Reference Compact Model Library. And this is meant to provide photonic integrated circuit designers a baseline to develop foundry calibrated models for PDKs as well as develop custom components and models for internal libraries. Uh, provided in the LCML is a library of passive and active photonic components, uh, as well as a corresponding component level workflows that the user can follow to create and update their compact models. Or they can use it as reference to design new innovative photonic components and IP blocks. So the LCML will be released on our knowledge exchange and uh, you'll be able to download the compact models there and follow the detailed description of how the compact models are generated. In addition to the LCML, we've also significantly streamlined the process of extracting S-parameters for passive components. 
We've added new port objects, which replaces the need for modal expansion monitors and remote sources, and reduces the, the chance of mistakes. And uh, we also added a new S parameter sweep object, which automatically computes the S matrix from the ports. And the sweep can also check for passivity and reciprocity violations. So this is an example of a Y branch uh, in FTTT solutions. On the previous version of FTT solutions, uh, in order to extract the S parameters for this component, you would need to set up a mode source, a modal expansion monitor, and a profile monitor at each of the input-output locations. And then you need to write a script to loop through each of these monitors, uh, extract the expansion coefficients, and construct your S matrix, which can be quite error-prone. And uh, with the new ob uh, port objects that you see here, all you have to do is drop them in the input and output locations, uh, select the modes you need, and you don't really need any additional simulation objects beyond that. And once that's done, you can use the S parameter sweep utility. Uh, this is also a new feature. And this will allow you to choose any mode of any port that you want to include in your S matrix. And uh, when you click Run, it's going to automatically launch the simulation file for each of the modes in each port and collect the results and then automatically return the S matrix for you. If you right click on the sweep object, you can visualize the S matrix themselves, the, um, also the diagnostics, which gives you the reciprocity and passivity values to make sure that uh, they're good enough before you export the results. And to export the results, you can right click and click on export to interconnect. And this will save a DAT file with uh, all the S parameters uh, that you can then use in the compact model uh, as part of a larger circuit simulation interconnect. Another feature that improves the parameter extraction process for passive components is that uh, all the mode sources and port objects have been updated to support broadband injection. And this is a feature that has been heavily requested by our users. And uh, the injection errors that you use you used to see uh, due to mold mix match can now be significantly reduced by using a few frequency points instead of a single frequency point. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, in a lot of cases, the mold profile is relatively constant as a function of frequency, so you can still get away with using only a single frequency point. But for cases where the mold profile changes drastically, uh, like in this example here where I have a, a very narrow waveguide, and um, then you may want to consider the multi-frequency option, which you can set um, uh, by selecting this multi-frequency mode calculation tag, and then you can specify, say, five or 10 frequency points uh, to significantly reduce that injection error. Another feature related to compact model support is automatic uh, game modeling in interconnect. The interconnect traveling wave laser model employs an accurate time domain filtering in order to represent the frequency dependence of the material or the modal gain. And these elements can be used to simulate integrated lasers. So for example, a tunable laser cavity can be modeled with an ideal mirror or uh, with a waveguide Bragg reflector. And the effects of the output power as a function of the design parameters can be studied. And this modeling approach allows one to study the effect of back reflections uh, from the rest of the photonic circuit. The new laser gain fitting functionality allows for the direct fit of the required time domain filter impulse response spectrum to an arbitrary shaped gain curve. And as you can see here, the quality of the fit is really excellent over the required simulation bandwidth. Here the time domain filter varies with the carrier density in the 1D spatial element and replicates a family of arbitrary shaped gain, curve, uh, gain spectrum curves varying according to the carrier density. Finally, the new Interconnect Monte Carlo analysis framework calculates the impact of process variations, uh, giving an early estimation on how it will affect the photonic integrator circuit functionality. So the Monte Carlo analysis allows for process variations, uh, variations from wafer to wafer, and mismatch between devices, uh, for example, from thickness variation within the wafer. And correlations between variations can also be defined. Uh, the Monte Carlo analysis is also fully supported by the Interconnect SPICE Netlist parser, enhancing its, its integration with traditional EDA design flows. The correlation constraints and statistical variations can be defined for each circuit component. Uh, for example, in this case, the coupling coefficients of the directional coupler have a statistical variation and are correlated to each other. 
The Monte Carlo framework also features sophisticated analysis tools, including yield measurement and estimation, histograms, and automatic probability density function fitting. Now, the right here, we have the FSR plotted as a histogram with a PDF. And the last feature I'll talk about is the 1D optical toolbox. So we added new screw commands to the numerical optical toolbox and providing analytical methods for determining the optical response of a multilayer 1D stack. And this is nice because analytical methods are often more efficient and accurate than FDTD simulations for uh, 1D stacks. So for transmission and reflection or field information of a plane wave source propagating through a stack, you can use the stack RT or the stack field functions. And these commands are included in all the products. So you can try them out as soon as you download uh, the new versions. So if you want to look at the emission characteristics of dipole sources under the influence of microcavity effect from the stack, you can use the stack dipole command. And this command is considered a beta feature, so it's not automatically included in all the products by default. But uh, if you're interested in giving this a try, please email beta at lumerical.com and we'll be happy to set this up for you. All the commands work for dispersed materials, multiple layers, frequencies, and angles. And you can visit the links provided here to see examples of how, uh, how to use them. So most of the examples in this video are already available online. And uh, the easiest way to find them, as well as more information on the new release, is through the links that are listed here. The Lyrical Knowledge Base and the Knowledge Exchange uh, are also a great ways to find more information. Thank you for watching.